The Southern Rock Lobster, or crayfish as us Tasmanians call them, is a delicacy prized by seafood lovers around the world. Tasmania is home to healthy levels of Southern Rock Lobster stocks amongst our waters, which is amazing for fishermen like myself. One of the reasons why Southern Rock Lobster is so delicious is due to its tender, succulent meat. It's sweet and kind of savoury, and its flavour is unmatched by any other seafood. Whether grilled or boiled, the Southern Rock Lobster is a versatile ingredient that adds just a touch of luxury to any dish that you create. In this adventure, we team up and head to some remote island ground to fill our fridges with Southern Rock Lobster, and hopefully find a personal best sized specimen along the way, with the target to catch one over three kilograms. I'll also be providing a little bit of safety information as to how we do things when diving on a compressor. Do you like lobster meat? What's your reasoning? Let us know in the comments down below. Without further ado, let's get into this episode. Hey, Wallaby Dick, welcome to another episode of Tazka. We're off on an overnight adventure. Got swags on the roof. We've got Nick and Steve on board. We're gonna go for a cray dive, see if we can uh, get our limit of crayfish. And then I think we'll be chasing the flats today before we head out wide tomorrow with a bit of forecast. Um, so, what I'm gonna do is quickly run over everything, get a position report in with our intentions. I'm going to reset my trip intel because this is a couple of night trip. Um, just so I can track how much fuel I've got on board. 320 liters on my yellow fin, which is great. Just for anybody at home running the same sounder, uh, you go into more, trip intel, and I always start a new trip on a big voyage like this. So stop trip and start, and it'll start from zero to monitor how much fuel we've got. Hey boys! Yoo-hoo! Hello Steven, how it's are you? really nice. It is really nice. Really, Hello, really Pickle nice. Nick. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well. That's good. We've done a quick survey of your trailer. Yeah. Having a look. Bit we'll of trailer do, maintenance. We'll do a quick bit of uh, bush maintenance before we go tomorrow. Yeah, well, the bush mechanics are going to come out at us when we leave tomorrow to get home. It's about time that trailer got some love. So we're going to get out there and get wet and get fishing. We're tucked in and we're ready to rumble. Nick's gonna jump in first. Uh, not sure if you guys can tell, but I've been diving a bit too much lately, so I may have had a little hiccup with my eye. So worst case scenario, I'll have to jump in. Do you wanna do that around the back? I'll get it for you. All right, we're gonna set up. Hopefully Nick can pull a couple of cray for us. And see how we go. As mentioned earlier, today we're diving on a compressor, which hosts about 100 meters of hose. So that's the furthest distance that we can go away from the boat. Now we can either anchor up and have two people feeding out the line and spotting, or we can have one person on the wheel and one person feeding the line. Today we're doing a little bit of both. We run the compressor at about 100 PSI and the motor on low revs to be more fuel efficient. The compressor also sits on some additional rubber matting to stop extra shaking and, you know, anything moving around. There are a lot of compressors out there that are prone to having a knock in them, so it's an additional precaution to have the rubber matting. At this first location, we're diving in about 6 to 10 meters of water, so we take nice slow movements getting down to the bottom and coming back up to save any barotrauma, which is also known as MEBT. Our limit of crayfish for the day is six, so that's what we're on the hunt for. Here in Tasmania, we're not allowed to use any utensils to help us catch these crayfish either. It all has to be by hand. 
you don't get the grab every single time. Here's one that is missed. Sometimes when you have the excitement of seeing a crayfish there underwater, um, you completely forget about the technique that you normally employ, which is reaching underneath and pinning them to the cave or to the rock so then you can get a better grab with your other hand. So here, that method was thrown out the window. <laughs> Here is a pretty successful grab and a fantastic example of a crayfish just wedging itself in between a couple of rocks. Sometimes this happens and you really need to be persistent to just really pull that sucker out of there because it will do everything that it can to not leave that hole. Brother Nick, how'd you go, bud? Woohoo! That's a nice big cray. What's that? That's a. It's like me, baby. That's a male. That one? Yeah. yeah. Male. That's a big male. Don't lose him. <laughs> nice one. Well, you've missed. I've taken half the legs with it, but that's a monster. That's at least a kilo or so. Oh no, that's stuck in the wedding now. <laughs> Just seen the mess I got in underwater. <laughs> well done. Hold it up next to you so you can see it for scale. That's a nice big crayfish. Hold on. That's about five five meters of water. She'll keep. Yeah. Good job. Before too long, it was time for me to jump into the water and the first bommy that I jumped onto had an absolute abundance of life. So I was able to be selective and pick out a bigger model from that location. Managed to find one big male. Unfortunately, there were some other big bulls in there but I just couldn't quite get a grip on them. Just approaching them from the wrong angle and then just getting clawed or breaking antennas. But that's a nice size, probably a couple of couple of kilos on that one. I jumped back in the water in a new location to search for that trophy crayfish. Came across this one bommy and this big bull stuck out like a sore thumb. And I tell you what, it was a pretty tricky wrestle. That is by far my PB cray I've ever got. That is at least coming in at two kilo, maybe three. But look at the size of that thing. <sighs> Woo! That was a wrestle and a half. You probably saw that footage underwater and it took a long time to fit into that bag. But that is an absolute thumper. One for the dinner table. <sighs> For six people, I reckon. Whew. How's that? Whew. That's a ripper, mate. That well done. <sighs> Good dive. Yep. Oh, just so you get an idea of the size of this, that's 60, 63, 62 centimeters. That is absolutely massive. And the, the claws on it, I don't know, that in comparison to the size of my head is <laughs> this huge. Well, I can't believe that. Got one other cray in there, and uh, that's us for the day. We're diving tomorrow, but we'll be cooking this up tonight for sure. Well, that's a wrap on the crayfish for the day. Nice little spread. And that is comparison of that bull. First one that Nick grabbed. Nice size. But uh, sorry to say, Nick. Not bad, good size. <laughs> Settle down, Nick. 
you're already doing that. You've, you've, you've been settled drinks. for you've been settled for hours ever since I got out of the water. I've been settled. Yep. Size of this crane <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice size crane. Good size crane here. <laughs> Big size crane wallaby dick. <laughs> Gonna see if we can find some nice sandy bottom, about 10 meters. Get a little burly log out and see how we go. Hey, this is a nice little fish. This is a nice little fish, Nicholas. Actually fighting quite well. It's either a, a flathead or something better. I'm settled down a little bit now. If that's a gurnet, no, still going, it can't be a gurnet. See you buddy. Hey, I think I've found our first, first flatty for the day. No, you're kidding me. That is huge. Get the net, grab the net, quick. Quick, 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 quick. Oh my gosh, that's huge! Yeah. <laughs> that is a big flatty! Oh my golly gosh! That's the biggest bloody flathead I've seen in a long time. Yeah. That is the biggest flathead I've caught in many, many moons. That's a 50... That's a 52 centimetre flatty. Wow. Nice. Good fillets on that. Right. Might be on to a nice flatty again here that looks like a nice size flatty can I grab a net please hey Steve can I please grab a net oh actually I'll just risk it it's another keeper though oh yeah hey, they don't like the bait nah. they like my jig though I'll tell you that much yeah. A good size. We're just sitting here drinking beer. Nice size flathead. Look at that. What's this one then? Another 46. Beautiful. Pretty good. Oh, and in there. What size? Now? 32, 32 is size now. Well, that's us for the day. It's been awesome. Lots of crayfish. A couple of really nice flathead, my PB flathead. I've probably got seafood sauce around my mouth from just gorging. We've got our swag set up. I think um, we're gonna come ashore and just chill for the rest of the night. Get a nice early start tomorrow. Ready to get some stripey on the jig and bait fish. I've been fresh out of stripey. So I am more than happy to fill my freezer with that beautiful creature. And we might even get out and do some blue eye fishing as well. I wanna mark up new ground on this trip too, so. Well, I'm not asking for much, but let's fast forward to day two. What an awesome day one. This place is awesome. If you require any more information about rock lobster fishing, especially down here in Tasmania, head over to fishing.tas.gov.au to check size limits, uh, whether or not you're in the northern zone or the southern zone. They are subject to change each season, but in this season, in this particular spot, all of our females had to be 120 millimeters and males 110. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on new releases. And we will see you in part two of this awesome overnight trip.